This is a J Mix exclusive. Mm -hmm. He said, go to the office tomorrow. And then still, I ain't spit. Go to the office. I go and there'd be a check there again, it'd be a check there again. He did about three times. So now this is really getting good, you know. So I'm just there writing and doing. But what happened with the, the Kevin thing, one day, early on I had talked to, Sugar was talking to me. He said, man, how come, uh, who you know up here? How'd you, he said, man, I said, well, man, uh, my boy Chuck brought me but I've been writing for Kevin, you know. He said, you've been writing for Kevin? I said, uh, yeah, man, uh, the stuff for CG and the emotions and all that, I was, I've been writing for him. He said, you've been writing for, you writing that stuff? And I said, yeah, yeah, I've been writing. He bring me in the room, give me the tracks and I write. And uh, he said, he said she was liking my stuff and everything, man. He called Kevin. This is when I first saw Shug's power. He, you know, you know, I mean, Kevin about 6'3", 6'2", 6'3", and he was a heavy guy, not fat or anything, but he was a bulky guy. Yeah. And um, Kevin called him, called me back. He called me first back to the, to Shug Knight's office, right? And he called Kevin. He said, "Tell somebody, tell Kevin to come back here now." Kevin came back there. He said, "Kevin." This is my boy D, right? He said, yeah, no, I know, uh, sure, we've been, he, he said, uh, he said he been writing, uh, yeah, I was gonna let you know, Suge, and I was gonna, he, he said, you've been telling him that, 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 uh, that I'm excited about him, and woo, -woo. He, he said, uh, when Kevin tried to explain it, he said, man, shut up, stand in the corner, stand in the corner. He made him stand in the corner, and I'm watching all of this, and he, and, and Kevin's trying to talk, but Shug, but Shug, man, stand in that corner. And, and uh, I, I, right then I was like, oh my God. It's like he's a five-year-old. Man, I said, oh my God, stand in the corner. He said, man, um, we, we gonna do some business now. Woo, woo, he's talking to me or whatever like that. And, uh, and, and it, to me, it's a little bit of relief off too, because all that it confirmed that she really didn't know about me like he was really using me you know he was using like petty cash that was in the drawer to buy me lunch and stuff like that but there was no you know i don't believe that kevin was going to be a. I I believe he was being crooked i don't think he was going to give me the credit that i had coming i think it, he felt like if he throw me something here and there or whatever that would have been enough or whatever you know like just keep it real, there was a lot of people running around with, that, that was doing work, that, it, it, all they got was a gold chain here and there and something or, you know, or rent or, or a car, because he had access to all these cars, uh, Shug, and um, so people were running around with cars really that belonged to Shug, you know. So some people did stuff for just that, and I think uh, Kevin was following suit in his level, like, Learn how to use these little guys. Get you know, get where you're getting, and use other people. To uh, really, to me, I don't believe that um, I would have got treated even half as right as I did in the end if everything didn't blow up from death row. I don't believe that it was that it was uh, Shills and them's intention to really pay us right. I don't. I still don't believe that. I believe by everything messing up the way it did and. Um, should go into prison and all these things like that. I think everybody else had to handle what the business that they had to handle and everybody else went and got lawyers so things ended up getting handled the right way. It brought lawyers in and things like that. But I think uh, Tyrone and I would have got cars or a chain or 
some dollars here or whatever like that, but nothing like our publishing really coming right or anything. I don't, I really don't believe that we were singled out. What's huh? The, what's a thousand dollars? Yeah. We're talking about royalties, you know, ten. That's what I'm saying. Right but what's ten or thirty thousand dollars? If you talk, you, my first check from death, my first check from Machiavelli was two hundred and sixty-nine thousand. That was my first check from Machiavelli. So, um, I know I don't believe I would have saw anything close to that. Maybe a fifty thousand dollar check, a thirty thousand dollar check, a chain, car. a car, you know, a uh, 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 head. Uh, uh, paid for my apartment and stuff like that. You know, something like that. I paid for a place, you know, but. I don't think we would have got, man, here's all of what you pay. Because we still didn't get, you know, everything. And I didn't get a lot of things. I found out about some guy in Baltimore was receiving checks in my name. I found that out through, um, through uh, ASCAP. Another Daryl Harper? Oh, man, a girl. There was a girl that had worked there, man, Shari Henry. Um, a really pretty thin girl. And she, uh, she took a liking to me, and we met. She said she saw some postings about me receiving money somewhere, whatever. I said, no, that, <coughs> that can't be me. So uh, she said, I'm sure it's you, though. It's your work. It's the, it's the songs that, you're, you know, that you have here. We called in her office. And this guy answered the phone. And she put him on the intercom. She said, oh, are you the Daryl Harper that did such and such and such and such and such? He said, oh, yeah, 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 like that. But she said, oh. she said, that's kind of strange. I'm sitting here in California, and he's sitting on the other side of my desk right now, and we want to know who you are. And the dude paused for a long time. And then he says, uh, hey, man, I told y'all from the beginning, this, I wasn't the same Daryl Harper. Y'all steady sending them checks here, and he's going off and all I said, oh, wow, man. So I was wondering how many times, oh, I don't know how much he got me for, he was getting them for a while. So, and so I was, I, I was wondering how many Daryl Harpers were somewhere, you know, because I felt like someone in company. That's just incompetent. I mean, that's just either it's crooked or incompetent. And I can't figure out which. That was my thing about Death Row. I couldn't figure out if it was just stupid or crooked. I thought it was quicker. I think, yeah, I think so too. Cause I don't even if a guy had my name, how would he know I wasn't getting my checks? How would he know to go the, the particulars about my songs and the whatever? Somebody, I believe somebody in that office was or something. You know, not to just you think anybody from Sugar or anybody down knew how to get checks and maybe split them with them or what? I don't know what what. Was but, Aretha managing you at that time? No, because I've never had a manager. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh, if, if she was, I didn't know it. If she was doing some stuff enlisted as a manager and able to touch some finances, I didn't know. But I, I, I thought everything was possible. You know, everything was possible. Uh, I, I lost so much money in this game. I lost, I, I lost $750,000. Um, for a judgment against me with a lawyer that I just feel like she was in it, um, only for only because I changed lawyers. But for what? When this you whole thing, no, when this whole thing started happening with death row and I wasn't receiving my money and everything like yeah. that, there was a guy. The only money I had received was a guy named Scott Erickson. I want to thank you, Scott, where, wherever you are, man. God bless you. Uh, he took it upon itself to cut me a $35,000 check but because I wasn't receiving no money. And I went to jail for a ticket. You know, I had a three-day sentence for a ticket. And he agreed to cut a $35,000 check to me. You know, uh, he said, well, it's really your money anyway, and I, I just think it's a shame that you're going through all of this and you don't even have all this money out here that we have posted that you've made and you're not getting anything. So that was my first money from Machiavelli was, uh, I mean, my first money that he cut, my first, uh, what do you call it, statement was 269,000. The actual first money I ever touched was 35,000 that this guy, Scott Aronson, 
he was the lawyer for the company for either Interscope or somebody then, or priority, some priority or something. And he just thought that, hey man, we'll get you at least this much. Do you know how hard it was for them three days in jail, knowing I got out, when I get out, I got 35,000? Yeah, that's long three days. Man, every time I went to sleep at night, I thought it was morning and it had only been 10 minutes. You know, be like, cause I had already in my mind, I'm gonna buy this, I'm gonna buy that. <laughs> I'm about, you know, 35,000 already. And then when my lawyer let me know it was already there, I, oh man, every, them three days, every day was like 10 days. Yeah.